What's going on, everybody? It is December 20th, five days till Christmas, 12 game Wednesday slate. It's a big one. Um, lots to go through. Uh, last night's DK GPP entry was a failure. Uh, I think only one entry, I only had one lineup that was in the money, but we're running it back again. 20 lineups, DK GPPs taking a break from FanDuel for right now catering to the masses that wanted to see some more DK um, but let's just get into it as per usual first game that we're going to look at is the Hornets because they usually play it why is that what it is that's interesting what's happening there um, no that's fine what do we got going on here that's a problem? Why are the Hornets broken? Did they change their uh, abbreviation on FanDuel or something? No, they're there. Ooh, no salaries. Why no salaries? Great start. Great start to the to the video. Why are there no salaries for FanDuel? Did I miss him? Well, this is awful. But let's grab it. Are they not included? Uh, I'm so confused. Do the Hornets not play today? 7.30 start. This is just super confusing. This says 7 o'clock. Is it not included? That doesn't make any sense. They would never not include that in the main slate. Why the hell is why the hell is FanDuel excluding that game? Okay. They really are though. So DK locks at seven. And FanDuel locks at 7.30 tonight. Something to keep in mind. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Anyway. Okay, we'll still look at uh, the DK side of this, but for FanDuel, I don't know, ignore what I'm saying. Man, that's bizarre. Why would they just chop that game out? Like, It's not as if it starts at 4 in the afternoon. Damn thing starts a half hour earlier at the normal time that these games start. Anyway, uh, Hornets, 105.25 implied total, which is 11th out of the 22 teams tonight. Um, I think that we can look at Kemba. Should be a decent game. I won't want to watch it, but it should be decent. We'll look at Kemba. We'll look at everybody, I guess. What a weird, weird um, stance to take. Yeah, so uh, round one of the throwing a bunch of lineups in the GPP did not go well. Not that I'm surprised. On a on a three game slate, you know, you're either if you take a couple stances, if you're wrong, you're just going to be wrong across the board. All righty. So first up, we have. Hornets and no we're not looking at Kemba I think we want to look at Dwight and Batum 
MKG. So Dwight would need Thirty-eight. Moving slow here, guys. Sorry. Um, I don't see any issue with getting there. <clears throat> and I'm just leaving the fan duel points in here for now. It's not going to be a huge difference. Yeah, I like. I think Dwight is fine. Obviously, uh, not available on FanDuel. Batum needs 28. Um, he's been pretty good since he's gotten back. MKG needs 23. I mean, he's been over 30 in three of his last five. Um, I'm willing to take that chance. I'd like to have some pieces of Charlotte here. Not too many or anything, but top to Toronto now. Raptors, um, 106.75 implied total. Eighth on the night. They are uh, one and a half point favorites in Charlotte. Uh, Abaka is uh, expected to play tonight. Ooh, that looks tasty. Um, yeah, I think I like DeRozan. Let's break that up by team for right now. Where's Toronto? What the hell is this sorted by? I don't even think it knows. There we go. Yeah, I think I like DeRozan a little bit more. Than Lowry. Not by much, but... Just a little bit. A little bit better value. And then... Love Surge tonight. At 56 or 5900. This is a DK price. So he needs Surge needs 30. You know he's been there in basically every game in his last five that he's played. Two 29s. Like that's just that's perfect. No real interest in Lowry unless he is notorious for like roasting Charlotte. And Charlotte's pretty much the same team, so are the Raptors. It's one of those instances where I would be comfortable accepting like, okay, this guy owns another team. The Raptors and the Hornets have been pretty much the same team for a while now. So who are we looking for? Kyle Lowry. Okay, so Lowry has performed very well against the Hornets in the past. Has DeRozan. This might make me rethink it. Not as much. He's had some stinkers. I just like this game for some reason. I don't know. Jonas needs 27. He's been there big time lately. He does have to deal with a lot of Dwight. How has he been in the past against Dwight? So last year would have been the Hawks. I'm fine with Jonas at that price. Like, 
He's got upside. He's pretty valuable. 26 minutes. I'd be silly not to at least take a peek at him. That's a really interesting game. I'm very surprised that I like as much as I do there. The values just look right on DK. So now we can spread it out to everybody. First game at 7.30, which is the FanDuel lock. Hawks and Pacers. Uh, Pacers, four and a half point favorites in Atlanta. Um, Hawks, 104.25, which is 13th on the night. I don't anticipate loving too much here, as there's not really any injury news. Okay, we need to look at Ilyasova for sure. I think we want to look at Schroeder and Collins, and that's probably it. Ilyasova is a really good value on uh, FanDuel. Looks good on both sites, though. Needs 25 for value. Has not been there in three of his last four. Um... But I think he could have a nice bounce back. Collins is 5,300 on DK, 5,700 on FanDuel. So he needs, you know, 26 ish. He's 30 in two of his games back, but those minutes are low. Um, I like him in a GPP setting but not necessarily uh, in a cash setting just because of his minutes. Since I'm playing GPPs tonight, I'll probably have a couple parts of uh, John Collins. And then Schroeder needs 7,300 DK, so that's 36. Um, he went through, through that stretch of 20s, which is awful, but no reason to think he couldn't have a good night tonight. It's probably a stretch, though. Um, so let's just go to Indiana. Oladipo, 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. Um, he's just been out of his mind, though. I'm at the point now where it's getting harder and harder to ignore him. Feels like the Jimmy Butler leap from like three or four years ago. Or I'm just under on him for so long and then he becomes, you know, a star in the league. Alright. That's yeah, still not going to be an Oladipo night. Miles Turner, though. We'll look at Turner. Yeah, we got to look at everybody here. Collison needs 29 we'll say if you knew he was going to get minutes like I've got him at 30 if you knew he was going to get 30 I think he looks good but if it's one of the nights where he gets 24 or 22 or 21 those are the ones that'll stink you so that seems too risky for me I'd be comfortable with it in a GPP with a small piece but there are better options out there Oladipo needs 48. Um, I don't see any reason why Victor Oladipo can't have a big game tonight. It should be relatively close. You know, we know he's going to play. It's the Hawks, so they're not very good. Thad Young on FanDuel needs 30. Um, it's just a really good price for him, 6,100. Where's Indiana? There we go. Yeah, it's not bad.
so I've got um I added a couple more things to this sheet and I'm gonna add them to the sheet that's out uh, on my website but I've now put in uh, percent chances to hit 5x and 6x um, in the past I've used these as well using uh, players standard deviation of points and projected minutes um, more often than not they run out pretty well the only place where they sort of break down our guys um, like in the minimum salary range uh, it usually puts their 5x percentages a little higher but for guys that are relatively established or you know guys with a bigger salary it usually looks pretty solid and the totals have checked out so you got to remember it's the aggregate so for the 5x for example like you know you'll see a lot of these guys on Houston have pretty high numbers of chances of hitting 5x but in the aggregate, we would expect, how many guys do I have selected? Eight of those, so I have eight guys there. We would expect basically four of those eight to hit 5x and four of them to not. But it's just sort of like a little barometer. And then I also have um, upside and downside projections. Um, the upside projection is basically one and a half standard deviations off their estimate based on their own standard deviation. And then the uh, the downside is the opposite of that. So someone like Miles Turner, for example, I've got him at 33 and a half um, with an upside of 51 and a downside of 16. And he'd be hitting 5X. This is for DraftKings in particular, but it's you know same scenario. Um, we would expect him to hit 5X 52% of the time and 6X 25% of the time. So he looks pretty good. That uh, that's also a very high percentage for six x in my opinion. But six x is different on DK than it is on Fanduel. Let's look at Miles Turner. Just so like seventy six hundred on Fanduel, sixty six hundred on DK. He needs. 38 on FanDuel and 33 on DK. Not a great game in his last one, but you know he's had upwards of 30 and 40, so I, I like him a lot there. And you know the Pacers have the fifth highest implied total, so having a part of the Pacers I think is a good idea. I think that's probably it for me there. So let's go to Boston. Uh, Boston is hosting the Miami Heat, um, who are a bit of a morgue right now. Real thin. Uh, Boston, 104.25 implied total, is 13th on the night. Um, I don't get the sense that a ton will be jumping off the page again. It's hard for it's hard for guys to look good when there's not any injury news. If everybody's playing the same amount of minutes, then their their prices generally stabilize, especially for teams like the Celtics. There's not a lot of like weird crap going on. <sighs> Obviously Miami is no James Johnson, no white side. Drogic is going to try to play. Waiters is in, um, but they're just they're just thin. Uh, so we want to look at Horford definitely. They don't have anything that'll be, um, you know, good to match up against. Horford actually might be in for a huge game. It's the Kelly Linick revenge game. Um, and I'm happy to take a look at Kyrie. I don't really need anything else on either of those teams, or on the Celtics rather. So Kyrie, 8,000 on both sites, which means he needs 40, um, he hit it in two of his last four. Not the most recent two, though. Um, I don't see anybody really slowing him down on the on the Heat. And then Horford, seventy eight hundred on Fanduel, seventy three hundred on DK. So let's just say he needs thirty eight. Um, he's been playing really, really well lately. I like it a lot. He's just going to be too much for like if Bam tries to guard him. It's it's not gonna go well. He's Horford's just way too smart for like a rookie big man, and I'm assuming Horford probably knows that he could roast Olenek. So 
just to you know give it another example so we'll look at Horford here I've got him at 34 um, upside 51 downside 16 38 percent and 12 percent um, that all looks pretty good now Miami so this is all going to be very price dependent I don't get the sense that a matchup is going to be as big of a key here as just is there anybody that's a crazy value because Boston or because Miami 96.25 implied total that is 23rd of the 24 teams tonight that's bad you don't want a piece of this um, so you we can look at BAM and we can look at Jordan Mickey I don't really think there's going to be too much else that we want to pay attention to like we you obviously don't want any part of Drogic um, Tyler Johnson on DK is off the table at 49. I think that you can entertain it at 4,500 on FanDuel. Um, I don't want any part of waiters. I think Wayne is now too expensive outside of a GPP look. Josh Richardson is, he needs 30, which he has done in his last three. He's been playing big minutes, but you know, Josh Richardson shoots half of his shots from three, which is something that uh, the Celtics tend to limit. So I don't get the sense he's in line for anything big. Olinick needs 30 on FanDuel, 28 on, uh, on DK. Um, that's not a place that I want to look. Jordan Mickey, I think, is in play. He needs 20. Whoa, that's a crazy zoom. So Mickey needs 20 on FanDuel, a little bit less on DK. Um, if he's going to play, you know, 20 plus minutes at that salary, I, I'm, I'm willing to take a look there. I think you need to have a little bit of him. And then Bam at 5,000 on FanDuel, just a little under that on DK. So he'll need 25. Um, you know, that's a GPP only look and that's probably not the spot for me so I, I think I only want Jordan Mickey there if I have anything now we'll move on to Brooklyn uh, the Nets are hosting the Kings Kings on a back to back um, Nets have a 106.25 implied total which is ninth on the night uh, I don't get the sense that this is going to be terribly interesting. And the Kings are a crapshoot among crapshoots. There are just too many dudes playing. They really need to just shorten that rotation. I'd be looking to trade anybody that they could just to get different bodies. Whoops. And I just overrode a lot of stuff that I didn't want to override. <laughs> Uh, the production quality here in uh, my studio is poor at best. <sighs> okay. Ah. Now let's try this again. So, nets. All right, so it's going to be a three-point shooting bonanza. Good luck betting on who the guys are that are going to play. My assumption is that Okafor does not play um, and that Stauskas only gets minimal run. But we're going to want to look at Alan Crabb. We're going to want to look at Dinwiddie and Joe Harris. Um, yeah, let's do that. So Dinwiddie is 7300 on FanDuel, 6700 on DK, so he, let's just say 35. Um, not the best two most recent games, and he has been down in minutes. Had been playing, you know, 30-plus. I've got him at 28 tonight. Um, 
he's scary if he's only getting 25 minutes. I think it's only a GPP look, but it's a great look in my opinion. Um, if you think that he's going to get minutes, uh, Dinwiddie is in a great spot. Alan Crabb is 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. So let's just say 23. Um, yeah, I don't love it. Hasn't been really good. Only one, only one game above 23. That's a good spot to look at, like, uh, upside stuff. So Crabs got projected for 22.7. Um, upside of 40, low of 5. These numbers love him. I don't know if I do as much. You know, it. I like it in the GPP, but uh, I'd avoid him in cash. And then Joe Harris, 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. Um, he has not been very good lately, but I would imagine that playing the Kings could be a nice spot for him. I like him in a GPP. And I don't really like any other part of the rest of the Nets. We'll move to the Kings. Kings, 100.75 implied total, which is 19th on the night. Um, I'm going to end up liking George Hill and probably nothing else. It's, I mean, like they played 13 guys yesterday. I don't. I think there's no way to be comfortable like you just you have to get the right dart it on a three game slate it was really miserable because you needed to have like nine different different kings potentially in a lineup but now i mean if there's 11 games or whatever or 12 games you shouldn't have any kings with confidence i don't think cool cool Everybody looks like a good play because the Nets give up a ton of mid-range shots. All right, looking at everybody, everybody that I think could get minutes. So George Hill needs 24, we'll say. Um, took last night off. Um, he's been good in the, in the three-game stretch before that. So... Ignore everything I just said about not liking Kings. I do like George Hill. Now from there, I don't want Fox or Mason. I don't want Buddy Heald because I'm not confident in the minutes. Buddy Heald played 28 minutes last night. He played 17 in the night before, 22 in the game before that. I've got him for 24, but it's just risky. You know, Bogdan played 18 minutes last night. I just can't be confident there. Zebo needs 32, we'll say. Um, I think that's realistic. I don't expect him to get just sunk in minutes. But again, I don't think I want a lot of these guys at the 19th implied total. Now, Willie Cauley-Stein needs 30 on FanDuel and only like 27 on DK. Um, I think that's a realistic play as well. But again, these are fillers. You don't, you don't really want any of these guys in cash. They're too unreliable. Move to Chicago now. Uh, Bulls and Magic. Bulls, 107.75 implied total, which is sixth on the night. Five-point favorites at home against the Magic. Uh, they've just been really... I think they've won six straight now since Miritich is back. Bulls versus Magic is a really dreadful game. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. I need breakfast, and I'm not even close to finishing this. So, Bulls and Magic. Okay. No thanks on Justin Holiday. I think we want to look at Rolo and Nawaba. Um. Probably it. Although six highest implied total, I might need to give it a bigger peek than that. I don't really see Chris Dunn at 7,500 as something I want to do, although 
he's been playing incredibly well. And Alfred Payton is not exactly going to be some lockdown guy. I'm going to assume that the Magic turned the ball over a lot. Oh, 14th. Okay. They're really bad at offensive rebounds, which is interesting because Robin Lopez is exceptional there. So what I'm going to do is load up Robin Lopez. Um, and I think I'm comfortable with Chris Dunn just because of the pace. Got him projected for 33, upside of 52, downside 14. Um, just because of the pace, I'm willing to entertain that. If they're still playing well, ride that hot streak. David Nwaba needs 23. Uh, that feels like a stretch. I don't really want any of Miritich... Markinen or Portis, although Miritich at 6,400 on DK, that's 32. He's been over that since he's got his footing, so I will take a look there. Then we're going to go to Orlando. Um, obviously, a bunch of injuries there. Jonathan Isaac is back. Aaron Gordon is out. Uh, Aflalo should play. They've got some really good pricing on DK. We'll see. So I think tonight will be my last live stream for probably a week. Depending on... Um, you know what's going on my parents get in uh, tomorrow afternoon for Christmas they're staying from uh, tomorrow until next Thursday so I'm not gonna have like a ton of time to be putting out uh, live content you know we'll just be going out to eat or doing you know family shit but I still expect to do uh, breakdown videos each morning and um, you know projections will be out every day I will definitely have projections out on Christmas and uh, I think that I might do a, uh, a free roll for everyone. Um, so check that out Christmas morning. Uh, I'll do a breakdown video. And I'm going to do, I'll have like a code that you could enter. So if you watch the video, you can join in the, the free roll. And we'll have some sort of winner take all Christmas themed something or other. So don't share it with people. Make people watch the video. That's the that's the more fun way to do it. But keep your eye out for that on Christmas. What the hell was I doing? See, I get get off on these uh, tangents. Orlando is playing someone shitty. Chicago. Okay. Yeah, I just gotta look at everybody that's getting minutes. That's a decent matchup. So I really like Alfred Payton. I think on DK, not on Fanduel. Needs 28 on DK. Oh, holy shit. He has been really, really bad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven straight games under 28. And he gets Chris Dunn. No, I don't want to look just specifically at Gorgie Zhang. Uh, where are you at, Orlando? His price is just so good. But he has been so bad. There's no way I'm taking him. Maybe in the A lineup, but I'm going to pass. Jonathan Isaac, 3,400 on DK. Um, am I crazy? Oh, yeah. I'm super crazy. I have them way over projected. So that's the perils of guys like Isaac who don't really have any projections. When they get when they're projected for high minutes like that, they're basically getting like a league average projection. 
Um, it's just sort of the way that my raw projections work. So you're going to want to discount Jonathan Isaac a bit. More than a little bit. Vooch, on the other hand. 10K on FanDuel, 9,400 on DraftKings. So let's just say we need to get to 50 as a goal. Um, he has been playing out of his damn mind lately. So I see no reason that can't continue. Although 102.75 implied total in 16th is not something awesome. But I've got him at uh, upside 67, downside 20. I know that sounds like such a huge range, but it's legit. I mean, even if you just look back at him, you know, 37 here in 27 minutes, like if you just get short minutes you can, and don't play well, you can crater. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know. Uh, Rockets and Lakers. I feel like this video is just dragging on and on. Um, so many games left, too. Uh, Rockets. 119.5 at their first in um, implied total. 14-point favorites against the Lakers. This is, uh, I want to say that I made this line up, but I'm pretty comfortable with where that's going to land. No KCP, no Brook Lopez. Nope, I didn't make that up. That's just a legit line of uh, them being awful. Okay. So, I mean, this shouldn't be terribly shocking since they only play like eight guys, but everybody's in play on Houston. Yay. But I think the Lakers, they either give up a ton of threes or don't. I don't think there's a middle ground. You would think that after looking at these shot frequency charts every day for like a month and a half, I would have some sort of memory of them, but I don't. They get purged immediately. Oh, the rim. Okay. So, love Clint Capella tonight. And, I mean, I'm going to kind of look at everybody. It's There's not a matchup issue that I'm worried about. So, Chris Paul is going to need 50, which he has done basically four out of his last five and five out of his last seven. Um, I don't have any issue with taking Chris Paul tonight. James Harden needs 55, which he has done three times in his last eight, but he has not done that in his last four. No KCP means we'll see a lot more Josh Hart and probably more Jordan Clarkson, um, which seems like a recipe for James Harden having a big game. So I like him there. Um, Ariza needs 25. He's been playing 40-plus minutes and still not getting there. Um, I want to say he probably has like a really narrow window. Yeah, high of 38, low of 13. Interesting. I'm going to pass on Ariza. I'll pass on P.J. Tucker. Although, Tucker's 3,800 on DK. He mean, that means he needs 20. And with Mba Mute out, Tucker's just kind of got, got to get minutes. Um, but uh, that feels like forcing it. No thanks on Ryan Anderson, but Capella. 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. So let's just say 38. Um, obviously a monster in his last time out. Got a day's rest. But he has the ability to put up big numbers. No Robin Lopez, so it'll be, you know, a diet of either Bogut or Zubach or, you know, he's getting like Julius Randle at that point. So it'd be hard not to like Capella. And I think if you're going to take Capella, you might as well... Oh, I already wrote it down. You probably want to take Paul, too, and try to get some stackiness. We'll go to the Lakers. 
Um, they're actually going to have a lot popping off the page just because of their injuries. It's going to be hard to avoid this game. It's probably going to be the highest owned game of the night. Uh, maybe Nuggets, Wolves, um, Lakers. 105.5 implied total, which is 10th. Which is pretty hard to do when you're a 14 point underdog. <laughs> but we'll see where that goes. Yeah, this is going to be an hour long video. Easily. Okay. I mean, just because of. The injuries, we need to take a look at everybody, really, except for Clarkson and Nance. And at least that's our DK thought process. So, Lonzo, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. So, he'll need 35, um, which he has been at in four of his last six. Uh, I mean, he should thrive in this pace. Be a little wary of having to have Chris Paul out there, but you can't ignore him. Um, I don't want any part of Jordan Clarkson, particularly on DK. I can see it on FanDuel, but that's not a spot for me. Josh Hart, on the other hand, minimum salary on DK. It's an absolute must. And he's still good on FanDuel, 3900 um, Brandon Ingram, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Let's take a look at him. He needs 35. It's a pretty good spot for him, but he's going to be getting a steady diet of Trevor Ariza. Um, Ingram gets to the rack a lot. Doesn't really shoot threes. I don't like Ingram there. Julius Randle, 5,500, so he'll need 27. He's going to be getting bigger minutes because of uh, Lopez being out. So I'm, I'm content with taking Randle. And I think that I'm fine with Kuzma. Same situation, needs like 27. This is a, a perfect game for him. Yeah, so we're going to want a lot of that Houston Lakers game. Now we'll go to OKC in the Jazz. Uh, Thunder, 14th on the night in implied total, 104. Um, the assumption is no Steven Adams. Um, it shouldn't be a crazy experience here, figuring out what we want to get from the Thunder. It's pretty much just Rust and Paul George. And unless this looks amazing, maybe Mello, but Mello has been... God awful lately. Okay, so I'm not as concerned about the rim stat here because I think that that's a lot of Gobert. So I like Russ a bundle. And um, I think that might end up being it. Paul George needs like 38. I'm not gonna. That that one's not one that needs to be forced. Uh, Russ is just sort of a no-brainer here. And then Mello is. He would need 30, um, but he's been so bad lately, and the Jazz aren't exactly the team where I want to like snap him out of it. So let's go to Utah. Assumption is that Derek Favors plays. Um, if he doesn't, that will open stuff up in their front court, but. For right now, um, he might actually be one of the only plays. But this is a shit game to have a part of. Jazz, 96 point implied total, which is dead last on the night. Um, they're just in they're just in shambles without Gobert. So we can look at Joe Ingles, because I think he's gonna get some additional minutes. But other than that. I think we'd probably be forcing a lot. So Rubio, 5,100. He would need 25. He has seen an uptick in his minutes lately. Um, let's 
it's actually not a bad look. It's not as if Russ plays a lot of defense. But he would be rebound hunting. So I'm going to ignore that. Mitchell I have in right now. Uh, I don't really want to take a look at him in this particular instance. So I think Joe Ingles is probably all that I'd be interested in here. 25. Um, he's been in that middle 20s range for like his last seven, but matchup fits him. Joe Johnson, minimum salary on FanDuel. Uh, just a little bit above minimum on DK, and he needs like somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, you want him over 20. Hasn't been there yet. I think that if Favors plays, he could be in a pretty good spot for it. But that seems, I don't want to force it. And then Favors needs like 27. Um, not going to force that one either. But he's obviously a much better in a much better spot if um, Gobert is out. But I don't think this is the game for it. So let's go to Dallas. save that this is getting long in the tooth i need to hustle we still have five more games to go through not a lot of these are going to be interesting mavs and pistons mavs 101 implied total 18th on the night uh the assumption is that dennis smith is uh questionable um let me just look at the pistons here and i'll know sort of whether or not we need to look at anything I don't, there's nothing I want from the Mavs on either site. I mean, you could play Maxi on DK at 4,000. It's been over 30 in his last two. I'm willing to take a peek there, but there's nothing else there of value. Um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't know how that backcourt's going to shake out. So go to the Pistons. They have a little bit of intrigue in that Avery Bradley is out. So at the at the very least, we need to take a look at the Pistons to see what sort of value that opens up. But the, the Mavs are sort of the opposite, and they're not really a team where you're looking to load up. Okay, so... I uh, definitely want to pay attention to Drummond, and then we'll see where the value is after that. Nothing stands out as super duper negative. Man, how are the how are Dallas the best team at avoiding stuff at the rim? I don't entirely buy that. Drummond needs 46, 47, something like that. He's had two 50 point games in his last three. Um, you know, he's boom bust, but I think you need to at least look at him a little bit in the GPP. Um, ish, it's just too risky, only GPP only. Um, what we want to look at is Reggie Bullock, 3,700 on FanDuel, 38 on DK, so he'd need 20. Um, in the two games without Avery Bradley, he's been up near 30, so you got to look at it. Stanley Johnson should get minutes as well. In the two games without Avery Bradley, he has also been of value. So, again, these are guys you need to look at because of the injuries, and I don't see anything else. Now, Nuggets and Timberwolves, which is probably the last spot where we have a lot of interest. Um, Clippers and Suns line feels a little high. So Denver, 109 implied total. Um, fourth on the night. Uh, Two-point favorites at home against the Timberwolves. what time it is already <sighs> these big slates are crazy so I want to look at Trey Lyles K 
Gary Harris is questionable. Barton's been seeing shorter minutes lately, which kind of scares me. But these guys look like they're going to be in for a GPP night. Um, Jamal Murray needs like 27. I don't have any interest there. I know he's had a couple big games. Um, but I think most of that is when Jokic is out. So I don't, I don't think he has the same sort of creation uh, when he's not. Gary Harris now ahead of salary than in Will than Will Barton, where Barton like a week and a half ago was like fifteen hundred dollars more. But Barton only played twenty six minutes in the last game. Gary Harris played forty one. Sort of the same situation before that. So I think it'd be hard to not look at Will Barton. I'm not gonna bet. You know, I took him two nights ago, and he had that really rough shooting game. Um, I'm going to call that more of a fluke than anything else. And then Trey Lyles, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Needs 25. Um, he's been playing really well. I think he's the new power forward for the Nuggets. I'll take a look. And then Jokic, 87 on FanDuel, 81 on DK. So he'll need like 42 Um Minutes aren't there right now, but if you think he's going to get a boost in minutes, I think you should take a look at Jokic. To the Wolves. I mean, not too much to uh, pay attention to here. God, my nose is so itchy. Um, yeah, we're looking at everybody, I think, except for Butler. I think Butler's salary is a bit too high now. Teague, gets, Teague needs 30 and change. Um, I think against Denver, that could be a decent spot. One hundred and seven implied total is seventh. Uh, Wiggins is needs thirty as well. <sighs> GPP only, in my opinion. Butler, ninety four on Fanduel, eighty eight on DK. So let's just say he needs forty five. Um, he's had three fifty point games in his last four. I really don't like that salary being so high. I'm gonna assume that he doesn't have huge numbers here. 28-7. Um, I don't like it. I think it's a little too risky. I'm okay not having any part of Taj. Although if Trey Lyles is going to shoot a lot of threes, that puts Taj in a position to get a lot of rebounds. And then Towns, 10-3 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. So he needs 45 on DK for value and 51 on FanDuel. Um, so I like Carl Anthony Towns a lot on DK. Price was a little trappy. Carl Anthony Davis. <laughs> That's a new one. Did I say Russell Wilson at all? Or did I say Russell Westbrook earlier? It was probably Wilson if I had to guess. All right, uh, Blazers and Spurs. The less time we spend on this game, the better. Uh, Blazers, only two options in my opinion, and really there aren't any. Uh, Blazers, 20th implied total, 100.5. Um, this is going to be the slowest game of the night and just really a just dreadful, dreadful fantasy game. I'm happy to take a look at McCollum and Aminu. I don't want Lillard. Lillard, 8,800 and 8,500, so let's just say 45. He's been there sort of in his last two, but I don't want it. McCollum, 6,400 on DK, so that's 32. I, I like that a lot. And then Aminu, just because of corner threes, 
It's at 4,600, so he needs 25. Um, I don't see the upside there. Spurs, no Tony Parker, no Kawhi. Uh, Kyle Anderson supposed to be questionable. Um, if you want to take Murray, I guess, I think that's okay. But I don't want any part of uh, the Spurs tonight. Aldridge is fine. He's a completely reasonable play. But this is not a game that I want a part of. Now, Warriors hosting the Grizzlies. There was not a line out on this, but I have it set at uh, Warriors 14-point favorites at home against the Grizzlies. Second highest implied total. Um, no reason to think it would be anything too far from this. I have Draymond playing. I have Zaza playing. No Curry, obviously. It doesn't matter how they shoot. It's the Warriors. So the only tricky part of this is just the blowout factor, which they should blow out the Grizzlies pretty bad. Um, what do the Grizzlies do defensively? Okay, they give up a little bit more threes. So I think it might be safe to take a look at Clay at 36-ish. Uh, it hasn't really been there. So I'll pass. Durant is at basically 12 so we say you need 60 i'm fine with it blowout is a risk but i think durant's the reason it happens he's in a position to just go absolutely insane and then draymond uh, dk maybe 37 if he plays um i like it but you know that's up in the air but if he's gonna play he's got, in my opinion he's going to be healthy enough to play and then we go to Memphis, which, you know, also is just a dreadful team. Uh, Chalmers' minutes have been trending back up. Um, so if he's 3,600 on FanDuel, I think that he's unfortunately in play. I don't even know what to say here. They're just, like, not good. Um... I think you have to look at Chalmers, unfortunately. Just because of his price in a GPP is worth a peak. You know, Memphis has the 21st implied total. Not very good. Um, Tyreek Evans needs 35. I'm okay with that. But that's it. Now, Clippers. Um... Lou Williams supposed to play. No Gallo. Uh, no somebody else. That I'm. It's not ringing a bell right now. Wesley Johnson. Yeah. Um. I actually have them as relatively large favorites against Phoenix. Sorry, I had to take a quick break to uh, let the dog out. Um, let's take a look at the Clippers because there's going to be some value here and then we need to look at the Suns, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to love Lou Williams tonight. I'm going to love a lot of the Clippers, actually. So Lou Williams is 7,600 on DK, 77 on FanDuel. So he needs like 38. Uh, I'm, I'm all over that. I don't really want Teo at that price. I don't really want Austin Rivers at that price. Jamil Wilson would need 20 plus. If he's getting those, nah, that's fine. DeAndre, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Let's just say he needs 40. He's been there in three of his last five. He's really picked it up. Um, I think it's fine. Right now, I'm anticipating Tyson Chandler to sit. 
which if that's the case it's even better um, since he's without question the best defender of the three centers or if they have Bender at center for some reason now finally last team to look at Phoenix Suns um, like I said I have Chandler out right now 102 implied total which would be near the end of the pack um, I don't really like guessing on the centers any longer I would like I like Monroe a lot on DK at 4500 but you got to know he's playing first it's a GPP only thing Isaiah Cannon um, 4,500 on DK 4,100 on FanDuel uh, if he's going to get 27 minutes you know he looks he looks great but other than that, I mean, you're you're just reaching um, for guys on the Suns. So I'm comfortable saying Cannon just because it seems like he's getting minutes now. It's amazing that you could just pick someone up off the scrap heap and play him for 28 minutes, and he instantly becomes one of your best backcourt guys. But that's why they suck. Um, TJ Warren on DK looks okay. He only needs 30 for value. So I will look at that. And then, you know, Bender's been playing a ton. He's just not very good. Um, he's worth a look in GPPs, but that's probably it. So that's it. That's a pretty gigantic shortlist. Um, you know, mostly because there's so many games. My shortlist is uh, a long list. But let's throw everything in to... Um, Fantasy Cruncher. We'll see what pops out as an optimal. We'll see what it, what it likes. I'll do this for DK and FanDuel. Okay. So, we're just going to do 10 DK lineups. So it's going to be uh, an interesting crunch. I wouldn't be shocked if this crashes when I do it. but I do want to see who's sort of popping up. A lot of Randall, a lot of Kuzma, a lot of Jonathan Isaac, which isn't going to happen. Um, like I said, he's uh, grossly overprojected. But Harden is popping a lot, which I like. Um, Lonzo, Towns. All right, a lot of what I, would, what I liked is popping. You know, Randall, Kuzma, Harden, Mickey, Ball, Towns. Russ, Nawaba, CP3, I like all of that. I think it's going to be a fun a fun build tonight. And then if we head over to FanDuel. Oh, I have a big feeling that I'm going to do well in the GPP tonight. And then I'm going to be really upset that I didn't like get into a bigger GPP. Perils of... Uh, bankroll time to stand i just stood how many times you want me to stand watch the answer is once every hour we'll do 20 on FanDuel since it's easier to crunch those Kuzma and Randall, Nawaba, Harden and Westbrook, which is what I expected. Rubio, Bam, Holiday, Chris Paul. So just to look at FanDuel, which is pretty easy to look at by position. Um, like I think have, trying to fit Russ and Chris Paul looks like a really uh, good scenario. But Harden far and away is probably going to be the most popular cash play. There's a chasm between him and the next shooting guard. So I think in a cash game, Harden is going to be the chalkiest of the chalk. And then you're going to be getting probably both Randall and Kuzma stacks. And then fill in from there. DK. Um, it's always hard because of positional splits and 
stupid shit like that. So let's just say a point guard. A lot of Westbrook, Harden, and Paul. Um, not that I'm telling you anything you don't already know, but those are going to be my main sort of rotation at guard, at like big and guard. Um, similar at shooting guard. Kuzma is going to be, you know, 80% of my lineups for small forward. Uh, Randall will probably be in like 80% of my lineups, and I'll try to chop them a little bit. And then centers uh, are going to have a lot of towns. So that's it. Um, like I said, I'll be back for lock tonight. Maybe a little early because it's a big one. Um, but like the video, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Reddit. You know, you guys know the drill. Check out Patreon. Uh, we're going to have a big night tonight. Let's do this. Bye-bye.